Now, if you follow us, you will have come across our last video on Internet Computer where we performed the DYO or Risk Evaluation Review earlier in May this year, 2023. Just like with any reviews we've performed on any crypto project in the past, a single video is just a tour dip into the project. It's not a deep dive. It is practically impossible to include everything about a project condensed into a single video. So, here we go again with yet more alpha on what I think is the least acknowledged crypto project that is Internet Computer or ICP. I guys this is fd 465tv once more back with another video and today we are going to jump into icp once again why because i find icp very interesting indeed and i think it's up for big things coming in the future anyway the key question here is can icp lead the charge towards blockchain singularity before we can even begin to answer that question baby steps people baby steps from internet computers perspective let's start with some matrix around performance developer experience as well as user experience and the information and data contained within this video or credit goes to internet computer wiki page or internet computer wiki i'll leave a link in the description so you can read all about it at your own pace and at your own time it is important that while protocol developers are important especially during the early stages of a new blockchain it is indeed the smart contract developers that are needed in order to develop product users will interact with by the same token early adopter users are great when establishing a groundbreaking technology such as cryptocurrency and blockchain but to truly engage with the wider public, the billions and billions of users are there. We need to have front ends that appeal to current Web2 user base. I hope some of the metrics we'll review in this video will help you understand why Internet Computer's approach is not only methodical but measurable and is indeed nearer to bridging that gap between Web2 and Web3 user experience, which then makes ICP's position as project to take the fight with the legacy system, which is the Internet Protocol. This is by no means a rejection or denial that they've been first movers in Ethereum, Bitcoin, and many others, but majority of these have taken a developer and degen approach to Web3, whereas Internet Computer appears to be more an extension than a completely new technology, even though the underlying technology is totally different, which makes it well-placed to achieve most of what majority of blockchains and networks within the space are claiming and attempting to achieve. Now, before I jump into some of these metrics, please note that most of you will probably be more knowledgeable on the subject matter than I do, and you you may or may not find any divergence in the numbers I'm about to spit out in this video. Let us jump in, starting with what many within the space consider standard metrics to measure the core protocol of popular blockchain. It is also important to note that the computation of some of this data may differ from protocol to protocol, just so you know. So I apologize in advance. Anyway, let's start by defining some of these metrics. You got useful work, which is measured in millions of executed instructions per second or average MIEPs, average TPS or average transaction per second, average finality, which refers to the amount of time that passes between the proposal of a new valid block containing transactions until the block has been finalized and its content is guaranteed to not be reversed or modified. We also have average block time, which refers to the amount of time between blocks per submit on the internet computer protocol. Then there is average transaction cost, which measures the cost of a transaction, average energy consumption per transaction, which measures the network energy consumption to process a transaction, measured in what Hours. Average energy consumption per million instructions, which measures the network energy consumption to process 1 million instructions measured in watt hours as well. Then you have the size of network nodes, which notes the number of nodes currently making up the network, as well as on chain storage cost, which gives the dollar cost and the native token cost of storing 1 gigabyte of data per year on chain. And like I said, the information and data in this video is courtesy of Internet Computer Wiki, link in the description. So as you can see, on stage Stable transaction cost, ICP is in the lead. It can do stable transaction cost. HTTP outcalls, ICP can do that. And the other blockchains being compared to, such as Algorand, Avalanche, Cardano, Ethereum, Nier, and Solana, cannot achieve the same. So that is on stable transaction cost and HTTPS outcalls. Again, if this information is inaccurate, let us know in the comment section. Smart contract language, ICP uses Motoko native, Rust, TypeScript, Python, which is about four languages. Ethereum, oh, it's got four languages as well so on languages you can see the diversity of languages for each product next you got max stack size where icp is sitting at 4 gib algorand at 4 mb and then you've got ethereum at 32 kib and near protocol at 256 kib so based on that icp could be if it's measured up with ethereum icp is doing a lot better than those two ethereum and near protocol max persistent memory per smart contract icp is in third active developers full time per month icp is in fifth but this day Data 
is from December of 2022. So some of this data may have changed significantly. Active repositories, ICP is in fourth position to Solana, near Ethereum. Ethereum is way in the lead. And then we have ICP. I'm wondering where Polkadot was end of last year. But then with some of this data, especially if it's a wiki or internet computer and it was written by an insider, maybe that the data is biased. But there you have it. You do your own research, you'll find all these things out. So as you can see, ICP appeared to be coming out on top, but I'm sure other blockchain projects will come out fighting and refuting the computation used on some of these metrics. And you know what, guys? That can only mean one thing. It's more learning for us, the masses. So it's a win-win in that case. If they start coming out fighting, throwing all sorts of data, it means we are getting educated. Anyway, moving on to developer experience. Persistent storage is expensive and limited. Application developers are limited to stack sizes of a few kilobytes to several megabytes at best, thereby limiting the types of applications that they can deploy on chain, as well as the increase in development and testing time, which amounts to cost. As opposed to all existing blockchains, the internet computer brings modern programming to on-chain developers, reserving more time for creativity rather than fixing memory packing issues or spreading computation in small iterations that do not hit instruction limit. The internet computer programming model offers orthogonal persistence, large stack, and the heap spaces, which amounts to 4 gigabytes, stable storage of 48 gigabytes, with plans to increase in mainstream languages such as Rust or even Python. So next, let's try and offer some description for each of the key metrics around developer experience. You've got stable transaction cost, which provides the ability to have predictable cost for computation, HTTPS out calls, which is the ability to communicate directly with Web2 services outside the network, max stack size, which is the maximum size the stack can grow for smart contracts and serves as a measure for the complexity of code that is supported by each platform, max persisted memory, which is the maximum size of persisted memory supported by each platform. Persisted memory is reserved across individual function code. Active developer counts, the number of developers who made commits on more than 10 days in a month or original authors who made commits in a given month or data from the site, then active repository. And then finally, user experience. This section attempts to map for Web3 usability. First and foremost is privacy, identity management, and authentication. On many projects, every interaction that a user ever makes can be traced and monitored. And while that demonstrates transparency, this is a serious breach on individual privacy. A large draw of Web3 is the fact that users can become owners and drivers of the platform. So if you are being monitored and your movements are being traced, you're trading off your privacy. Is that a reasonable trade-off? I'm not sure. Let's now try and describe some of the key metrics under user experience. So you've got privacy-preserving authentication, which notes whether a project allows privacy-preserving interactions with the blockchain. Prerequisite to use, which lists what is needed to interact with the project. Staking ratio, which gives the percentage of native tokens that are staked in the protocol. And then monthly active wallets, which counts the wallets addresses that send or receive native currency in a given month. And again, I must also state that the number of wallets does not necessarily mean the number of users because individuals can create and hold multiple wallets. That's something to take note of. And the information we are reviewing today is kind of outdated because it dates back to December 2022. But it's all good for comparison purposes, I believe. So on privacy preserving authentication, ICP comes up on top. Why? Because its prerequisite is just the browser. All the other comparable blockchains such as Cardano, Avalanche, Algorand, Ethereum, Nier, and Solana, you do require a browser, of course, and a browser extension, which is your wallet, and then the tokens to interact with the platform. Without the tokens, where you are charged a fee or gas, you can't interact with those platforms. So ICP comes on top in that sense. And monthly active wallets, back in December, ICP had 93,000 active wallets. Uh, Avalanche, one of the projects with a number in there, had 290 active wallets. Ethereum, of course, the number one smart contract platform at 15 million, and Solana had just over 655,000. So ICP building up to big things, I hope, but it was way down, way down in fourth, just by considering those platforms that hit the numbers low as part of this report of research. So not many projects will want to share these key metrics to ensure that they can be measured, evaluated in isolation and so forth. I know we have covered this before, but if it weren't because of the poor tokenomics, I think internet computer will be somewhere near the top five. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section. All in all, I think what we can take out of this exercise is that one of the most important metrics, if it's not the most important metric of them all, that is the prerequisite to use. Just like current Web2, one does not require a digital wallet or cash or funds to interact with the web application unless you are making a purchase. This could be one of the key features that will make internet computer more appealing current non-crypto Web2 users. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comment section because that is
is probably an overlooked key feature of internet computer and it could be a defining feature as well again that is just my thoughts let me know what you think down below in the comment section for my final thoughts it's too early to call out winners yet but internet computer is going to something here in my own opinion as for you do you hold the icp token within your portfolio and are you holding that for the long term because i think guys this one is for the long term this one is for the future if you have any comments or issues queries let us know in the comment section until next time guys this was a quick update on icp and my thoughts on some of the measurable metrics that are used to measure blockchain networks and where i think icp has got certain things right especially around the interaction area where you only need a web browser you don't need a wallet and you don't need funds in your wallet what do you guys think let us know in the comment section until next time this is fd4sh5.tv signing out for now bye